Welcome to our recorded Mass here at All Saints Parish. Assisting us this morning, our sister Catherine Brown is our lector. Tom Bogachutz is our cameraman and technician, and he and uh, Amy Eager will put it together on the web and wherever you may choose to watch it. And Mike Treberg, close? Perfect. Perfect, okay. He's visiting with us this morning. So thank you all for your service, and we're just celebrating today the 19th Sunday of the year, and we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. But brothers and sisters, today we are reminded that it's good to take a risk every once in a while. We have to be careful, but uh, we have to take risks. Let's take a moment to reflect on whether we risk anything for God. Lord God, we are normally pretty afraid to take risks, but sometimes you require them, and we hesitate. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who we dare to call our Father, bring to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading today is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, beginning with verse 9, and then we immediately go to verse 11. First book of Kings, chapter 19, verse 9. And in this story, Elijah is on the run. He's from the northern kingdom, where Jezebel is the queen. And she has a foreign god, a false god, that she worships and has imported into Israel and is trying to get all the people to follow her god. Well, the Lord, the real god, doesn't like that at all, and neither does Elijah. And so he arranges a contest with this god, and our god, the true god, wins. And so the bad god, the false god, is wiped out and along with him 400 of his priests are wiped out and Jezebel doesn't like this Jezebel is mad and she issues a death sentence for for Jeremiah and Jeremiah is on the run Jeremiah heads south to the southern kingdom and there he gets word that God the true God wants to have a word with him. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Mount Horeb, the mouth of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. 
but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, Lord let, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, Lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The next reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9, beginning with verse 1. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9, verse 1. And here Paul is grieving over the fact that his people have been looking for a Messiah, waiting for a Messiah for hundreds of years. And now that he has arrived in Jesus, they will not accept him because he is not what they expected. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> the next reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, beginning with verse 22. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 22. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the water, on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. 
Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and began to sink, and cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Walking on the water. It's something we all do, you know. It's called taking a risk. Some of us don't like to admit the fact that we take a risk. Most of the time we're pretty scared to take a risk. We're afraid. But we all do it. It's just part of life. And there are some worthwhile risks and some pretty foolish risks. I don't know if you remember the name Anna Taylor. And on October 24th, 1901, she was the first person to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel and survive. Now that was a risk, but it doesn't seem to me to be a very smart risk. Others had died doing the same thing. One risk that I've, I've seen is rather strange is that I was at an Oktoberfest twice now in Munich. And one of the things that young men do to prove their virility, I suppose, is to stand up on a table with a mug of beer, like one liter full, that's over a quart. And in one breath, they consume the whole thing, or they attempt to. And if they are successful, they get an applause from the crowd and great honor, I'm sure. And then somebody probably takes it home and puts it to bed with a barrel or a bucket nearby. Anyhow, it's one of those risks that's hardly worth taking. There are good risks and there are bad risks. Christopher Columbus took a great risk in sailing across the ocean and discovering the Americas. George Washington took great risks in waging the war of revolution. All the presidents, most of the presidents, many of the presidents at least, have taken great risks. It's just not something that we need to do if we're going to get anywhere. All of life demands some risk. People would never get married if there were no risk. Unless, unless, they always face a risk when they get married. There's a story about a man who was walking down the street and a voice said, stop. He stopped and a great piece of metal fell out of the sky from somewhere right in front of him and would have killed him if he'd taken one more step. He looked around and found out where this voice was coming from and couldn't find the source. A short time later, he was walking down the street, and a voice said, stop. And he stopped, and a car came crashing over the sidewalk and just barely missed him by inches. He looked around again and didn't see anyone, but he heard this voice that said, I am the voice. And the man said, who are you? He said, I am your guardian angel. I am here to protect you from all harm. And the man, you would think he would be very, very grateful and thank his guardian angel. But instead, he said to the guardian angel, and where were you when I got married? Well, God protects us, but not from everything. We're called to take risks. 
Helen Keller once said that life is an exciting, scary adventure, or it's nothing. Wayne Gretzky, the great hockey professional, said that you miss 100% of the chances, 100% of the shots you take if you don't take them. So we need to take some risks. Hopefully they're well-founded, hopefully they're for a good purpose, and hopefully they're well thought out, and hopefully we succeed. But it's not always the case. So I guess God is asking us, what risks are we willing to take for him? When someone in your company is bringing up a subject that's not the best, if they're talking about someone, for example, and tearing them down, if they're criticizing them for their race or their background or their religion or their nationality or their whatever, do we stand up? Do we say that that's not really appropriate? You don't like to hear that kind of speech? Or do you let it pass? When was the last time you invited someone to join you in coming to church? Lots of things we could do. When have you been called and when have you accepted the call to stand up for justice, to work with our community organizing group to bring affordable housing, more affordable housing to our community, to make sure that Narcan is in the hands of first responders and lots and lots of people who can bring people back to life, really, who are overdosing on heavy drugs. When we call for transportation so people can get to jobs who can't afford transportation themselves, who calls us to dental clinics, and lots and lots of other things we've accomplished over the last 10 years. And we have much, much, much more to do. So it's God calling you to join community organizing that we call CAGE, Congregations Acting for Justice in Parliament. God is always calling us to do something, and usually there is a risk involved. God calls us to walk on water. What water is God asking you to tread? We believe that God calls us all to walk on water. Let's profess that faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to find your peace in the storms of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Help us to hold fast to what is good and loving in the turmoil of this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Fill your church with the grace to be a refuge and a well of renewal for all drained by the troubles of this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those whose lives have been upended by storms, wildfires, and flooding, grant them the inner strength to recover from their loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That a lasting peace take hold in Ukraine and the troubled regions of Africa. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sick, may they find peace and healing through the gift of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have passed on from this life, may they know eternal peace and happiness in your heavenly presence especially Mary Lou Schapter and Andrew Bradley. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the wellness of the Church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your Church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered far by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, 
that a people formed as one in the unity of the Spirit, made holy by the, by the body of Christ and the temple of the Spirit, might praise your manifold wisdom as manifest in the church. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, now blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sitting down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this, this bread and drink this cup, cup we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Mary Lou Schaffer and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let's offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take you away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Be 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, oh Lord, I, I am not ordained that you should have turned in my roof. I will only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. And now let us pray for justice. Grant us, Lord God, a vision of your world as your love would have it, a world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor, a world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them, a world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect, a world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. May the communion in your Son, may the communion in your sacrament we have, we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.